say thank you, Lord. He's the God that's kept us, and we say thank you, Lord. Good morning to each and every one of you. Blessings of the Lord be upon you. Good morning to those of you that are streaming with us online today. God bless you. And as we come into the presence of God today, we're coming in with thanksgiving as we continue to celebrate 189 years as a church. Come on and bless the Lord. Today is a great day of celebration. We will be celebrating members that have been members for 50 years or more today. Come on and bless the Lord. And also today is Domestic Violence Awareness Day. Let's go before our God in prayer. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the great I Am. Hallelujah to the only wise God. We bless your name. Father, we come in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Thanking you, O oh God, for keeping us. Thank you for another day. Thank you for giving us the strength the ability to come into the house of prayer, the house of worship one more time. We say thank you. And Father, as we come into your presence, we welcome you. We ask you to come in and have your way in this place today. Oh Lord, as we lift up our hands in praise, as we set our eyes upon you, as we worship you, as we show you our appreciation, we thank you, oh God, for opening up the windows of heaven and pouring out blessings that we do not have room enough to receive. We thank you for the anointing that destroys yokes. We thank you, oh God, for salvation today, healing today, deliverance today. We thank you more than anything for you. And we've come to let you know that we care and love you so dearly. And we come to let you know that we come to Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, before we sing a song, can you open up your mouth for real? If you're grateful for the Lord waking you up this morning, come on. And starting you on your way, can you open up your mouth in the sanctuary? Somebody just shout hallelujah. Come on. All over the balcony, just begin to open up your mouth and bless the Lord. Come on. Let the praises of his people fill the temple. Come on, open up your mouth and tell him thank you. Come on, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Come on. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord for he is good. Tell somebody, say the Lord is good. And I will bless him. Come on. Touch somebody else, say the Lord is good. And I will magnify him. Come on. All over the building, begin to open up your mouth. And bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on, song says, I will bless the Lord at all times, and His praises shall continually be in my mind. No matter what I see or how I feel, as long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. Love you this morning, Father. Have your way. Come on, let's sing this together, everybody, from the top. Say, I will bless. Come on, and His praise. Come on, declare it this morning. No matter what I see or how I feel, say, as long as I'm breathing. Is anybody testimony this morning? Tell them to say, as long as I'm breathing. I'll bless the name of the Lord. Now come on, let's do that one more time. You got it this morning. Clap your hands and open up your mouth and let's magnify the Lord. Come on, from the top. Say, I will bless. I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on. And His praises. And His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Say, no matter what I see. No matter what I see. Declare it this morning. Say, as long as I'm free.
touch somebody next to you. Come on, say, let's do it together. Let's do it together. I don't see you clapping, everybody. Let's go. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Come on, everybody. Come on. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. I see you. Come on. You've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Yeah. Say you've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Say you've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Better than good. Say you've been better than good to me. Better than good to me. Come on, right here, say I should have lost my mind. Somebody, he's been better than good. Tell somebody he's been better than good. Come on, tell somebody he's been better than good. I don't know what you've been through, but God's been good anyhow. Listen, I should have been dead. Somebody clap your hands. Somebody. 
Everybody lift up a voice and give God praise. If you in here, you might as well praise him. Tell somebody, I came to give him praise. Now open your mouth and say something. Come on, church. Glory, 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 glory. Anybody know that we serve a holy God? We serve a holy God. Holy, 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 holy is your name. Anybody know his name is holy? You can sing this with us. Come on. Come on, here we go. Let's do it one time. Holy, here we go. Holy. Holy, come on, say. Holy. Lord God. Lord God. Almighty. Almighty. Come on, holy, say. Holy. Oh, hey. 
give him the glory. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise shall forever be in my mouth. Hallelujah. For the Lord is good. I said the Lord is good. Anybody have a testimony today that the Lord is good? His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Just look at the person next to you and tell them, I serve a great God. I serve a great God. Come on, turn to the person on the other side. Brag a little bit. Tell them, I serve a great God. I serve a great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. With that same spirit, we enter into intercessory prayer. We go to God in prayer, believing that he is great, that he is able, that there is nothing he cannot do. My friend said he can't, can't. There is nothing he cannot do. We go before his throne with boldness, with faith, believing that this morning. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, God, that we have the privilege and the honor to call on that great, holy, and righteous name, Jesus. We thank you, O oh God, that it is a strong tower that we can run into and find safety. We thank you, Lord Jesus, hallelujah, that you've given us that name, oh God, and you've put authority in that name, that when we call on the name of Jesus, things change, demons tremble, sickness leaves, depression leaves. We thank you, Father, that when we call on that great name of Jesus, Father, we find resolve, we find clarity, we find comfort, we find peace. We thank you, O oh God, that when we call on that name of Jesus, things just start to move in our body, around us, in our mind, in our family, in our bloodline. We thank you, O oh God, that we have that great name Jesus today. So, Father, we call on it this morning. We call on it boldly. We call on the name of Jesus. And we pray, Father, O oh God, for those who are sick this morning. We pray, O oh God, for those who are on their bed of affliction. We thank you, O oh God, that you still heal. We thank you, O oh God, that you are Jehovah Rapha. We thank you, O oh God, that you perform miracles. We thank you, O oh God, that there is nothing too hard for you. So, Father, we pray for bodies that need healing today. We pray for minds that need healing today. We pray, O oh God, that you would regulate cell counts, Father, today in Jesus' name. We pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, that you would conquer disease, that you would conquer sickness, Father, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, we stand in the gap, Lord. God, for those who are heavy laden this morning with disease and sickness. And Father, we pray for their healing in Jesus' name. We pray for those who comfort them, for those who work with them and support them. We pray for caretakers today. We pray for those, oh God, who've just been carrying them heavy in their heart. We pray, oh God, that you would be the lifter of their head. We pray that you would give them strength and support and encouragement. Give them patience, Father, in Jesus' name. And Father, we pray, oh God, for those who are in the hour of bereavement. We pray, oh God, 
God, for those who have a, a heavy heart today, for those who have difficult decisions to make, God, for those who are saying to themselves, I never thought I would be here. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that you would be their peace, that you would be their comforter, that you would be near to their broken heart. Remind them, Father, that your ear is tuned to them, oh God, and that you are waiting and you are willing to answer their requests. We love you, Lord, and we praise you, oh God. We seal this in Jesus' name. Everyone shout hallelujah, hallelujah, and amen. Come on, touch and agree with someone next to you. Tell them, say, he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. He's a God that makes promises, and he will never come short of his promise. If you would lift your hands right here, just say, Lord, I believe that I can still trust you. You won't fail. Hallelujah. All of your problems, all of your pain, all of your troubles, hey, you can give it to Jesus. All of your burdens, all of your cares, even your struggles, you can give it to Jesus. Here's why. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't leave you. No, he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't leave you. No, no, he won't fail. Come on. All of your problems, all of your pain, even your trouble. Say, you can give it to Jesus. All of your cares, even your struggles. Come on, let's declare it together. Say, say he won't fail. He won't fail. He won't, he won't leave. He won't leave you. No, he won't fail. No, he won't fail. Every believer, throw your hands up and declare. Put it in the house. Say, he won't fail. He'll never leave nor forsake us. He won't fail. Say he won't fail. Come on. He won't fail. He won't fail. He won't leave you. Let somebody know today. Declare it in the house. Say he won't fail. I believe that he will. He'll come through just like he said he would. He won't fail. Come on now. Let's declare this together. Listen. Say. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it in my own life. What happened to He keeps every promise. I'll never be forsaken. Say, I've seen it. Say, He keeps every promise. And I'll never be forsaken. I've seen it with my own I've seen it in. He keeps every. He keeps every promise. Come on. Never be I've seen it in. I've seen it in my own eyes. I've seen it in. I've seen it in my own eyes. He keeps every. He keeps every promise. Yeah. Never be I said he keeps every promise. Come on. And I'll never be forsaken. I believe that he will keep his promise. If we just believe, I believe he'll keep every promise. If we just hold to our faith, God will keep every promise. Come on, church. Everybody clap your hands. Hey, come on. He's always making it a way. Every believer, throw your hands up and shout. Come on. He's always making it a way. If you believe it this morning, say, he's always making a way. Always making a way. Time and time again, say, he's always making a way. He's always making a way. I believe that God will. Come on, he's always making a way. He's always making a way. I believe he'll come through every time. He's always making a way. He's always making a way. I believe I can trust in him, because he's always making a way. He's always making a way.
promise keeper. He's a deliverer. He's a provider. God will step in. Right when we need him most. When the enemy comes upon me to eat up my flesh. All of a sudden, he lifts up the standard. He lifts up the standard. No weapon formed against me. Shall prosper. He's always making. He's always making. I've seen it with my own. Somebody let him know he won't Woo! raise that faith. Yeah, he won't leave you. No, one more time. He won't fail. Say, he won't fail. Come on, he won't leave you. He won't fail. Yeah, he won't fail. Say, he won't fail. He won't leave you. No, he won't fail. Now y'all testify. Say, say, I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it in my own life. He keeps every promise. I'll never be forsaken. I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it in my own life. He keeps every promise. He keeps every promise. He keeps every promise. He keeps every promise. He keeps every every every. Yes, he keeps every promise. Just keep believing. He keeps every promise. Just keep on trusting. He is a God that can't tell a lie. He keeps every promise. He keeps every promise. Tap somebody and let them know that he keeps every promise. He's a promise keeper. Way maker say he keeps every promise. He won't fail. He won't fail. Come on. He won't leave. No, he won't fail. Declare it in the house, say it. He won't fail. I still believe it. One more time. He won't fail. Oh, he won't leave you. No, he won't fail. He won't fail. believer lift up your hands to heaven and declare it from your belly say I've seen it with my own eyes hey I've seen it with my own eyes I will trust in the Lord with all of my heart I've seen it with my own eyes yeah yeah hallelujah This first day of October in the year 2019.
2023, God has brought us from a mighty long way. And we've seen it with our own eyes that God is sovereign. God is a strong tower. God is a miracle worker. And God will not fail. Amen, amen. If you know that that is the truth, just turn to your neighbor and testify. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. I'm a witness. Amen, amen. We greet you today. We greet you today with the joy of the Lord Jesus Christ. What an honor and a privilege it is to be in God's house one more time. And for those of you who have joined us virtually, we welcome you. And we thank God for your presence and your participation. Amen. In Sunday worship. You may go to your seats. For those of you who are here visiting today, we ask that you would just stand. We'd like to see you and greet you. If there are any visitors here, please stand. Amen. God bless you. We welcome you to the Greater Allen Cathedral of New York. My brothers and sisters, we thank God for your presence here. If you would stand up, members that are around you will greet you and just make you feel welcome, give you a great Allen welcome. Amen. Amen. Today is Domestic Violence Awareness Sunday. And of course, uh, we as a church, we as a church believe, we know that it is not of God for any of God's children to be mistreated. Amen. Uh, and, and especially at home. And so we take that stand and we declare, we decree and declare, amen, that homes shall be peaceful and that when peace is not there, God gives you permission to get away. And that is why over 40 years ago, God gave us the vision to establish the Allen Women's Resource Center which houses men, women, and children who are victims, mostly women, uh, but who, uh, women and men and children who are victims of domestic violence. We founded the Allen Women's Resource Center in 1983. So isn't it amazing that God has given us the opportunity to make that kind of impact in the lives of women and children who have had to flee violence. And we've not only been able to give them a safe haven, but we've been able to help them to establish other homes, peaceful homes with their children. And we just thank God for that. Amen. Um, Today, we are still in the midst of our 189th church anniversary, and the call has gone out. The call has gone out for those members of our church who have served at this church for more than 50 years, and we're going to ask them to come to the front now. We did not specify any service. So we'll do it at both services, amen. If there are any 50 year members, come on and let's start walking. Look at them, look at them. Now some of them were babies when we got here. <laughs> I love it, I love it, they're coming. These have been with us since we have been here, and I just want you to know they are still coming. They have been present. They have been prayer warriors. They have served. Amen. Each and every one of them. Now, a couple of them were only one when we got here, but uh, uh, maybe five or six, but I just thank God for each and every one of you. I am so I'm about to cry. <laughs> Thank you. 
But we say to you that um, we are a great church because of that, uh, because of you and so many like you. And so we have these special plaques that we have prepared. It says, uh, in appreciation, uh, she's being dramatic. <laughs> in appreciation for over 50 years of service and dedication to the Greater Allen AME Cathedral of New York, Reverends Floyd and Elaine Flake pastors, the work is all divine. You know I had to include his name because he was here. The work is all divine. So God bless you, thank you so much. We love you, we appreciate you, your church family appreciates you, and certainly we pray that God will give you a double portion of health and strength and prosperity for the years. Turn around, uh, the photographer would like to take your picture. Amen. Church, just give them a hand. This is so wonderful. Yes, they have served and they have served well. God bless you and thank you on today. Amen. On a Friday night, um, State of Millennials and Gen Z Forum, uh, I will meet with the young adults in the... Um, in the chapel for a heart-to-heart -heart dialogue, amen. This is being sponsored by J. Jen uh, Ministry. The Dr. Donald Gardner will be leading the discussion and we invite all millennials and Gen Zers to come and join us on Friday night, amen. Now, I don't have two hard questions, but uh, I'm ready, I'm excited about meeting the young people who continue to serve in this church. Also on Friday night, uh, Reverend Eddie is back and he will, uh, <laughs> and he will be meeting, <laughs> he will be meeting <laughs> with the children, uh, Friday night live children edition. Uh, that is at seven o'clock PM in the Cathedral Banquet Hall. And then on Saturday, Chosen Men's Assembly will be at 10 o'clock a.m. here at the church. We will be in the sanctuary for prayer. The men will be meeting downstairs, is that right? At 10 o'clock a.m. So next Sunday, we will, con uh, we will um, conclude our anniversary celebration with Bishop John Richard Bryant at both services. And... Um, we're asking everyone to wear your purple shirts again so that we can uh, just, just uh, commemorate the, the goodness of the Lord and all that the Lord has done for us over these years. We have ordered more shirts. I think they should be here by Wednesday. And so for those of you who need to buy them, uh, we will have them here in the bookstore for you. On <clears throat> Sunday, October 5th, uh, Breast Cancer Awareness is Sunday, uh, October 15th. But on October 23rd, the Mount Sinai mammography van will be outside the church, amen, so that we can offer free mammograms to those who need them. Registration is limited. There is a table in the Narthex area at which you can stop and they will give you uh, a time slot. Let the people of God say amen. Brothers are gearing up for the Men's Ministry Legacy Luncheon here Saturday, October 28th at 11.30 a.m. in the Cathedral Banquet Hall. They will be honoring, they will be honoring the legacy of our pastor emeritus, Reverend Floyd Harold Flake. And they will be celebrating his impact, not just on the men's ministry, but on this community. The keynote speaker for that luncheon will be the Reverend Roderick Dwayne Beeland, 
who served for a number of years as our executive assistant pastor. Proceeds from this luncheon will go to support the Bootstrapper Scholarship Fund. Brothers, you can register online for this uh, event that will be held on the last Saturday of this month. Let the people of God say amen. And we are excited to announce that <clears throat> the Queen's Gala Ball, hosted by the Allen Community Nonprofit Program and the Greater Allen Development Program, we had that last, was it last year? Yeah, and so this gala will take place on Thursday, November 16th, honoring remarkable community, um, uh, community change makers. Uh, we had a great time on last year, and this too is a fundraiser for our Allen Women's Resource Center and our other programs. Now, those tickets are, will be available online. Amen. The tickets will be available online. Uh, I'm assuming that you will, uh, I don't see the website here, but uh, we will have it on our website so that you can purchase, so that you can purchase those tickets. It is giving time at the cathedral. It is giving time at the cathedral. It is giving time at the cathedral. Again, as we are culminating the celebration of our 189th anniversary, it would be so wonderful if you would give over and above your tithe and offerings $189 or more so that we can make that um, uh, so that that can be credited to our mortgage elimination drive. Uh, but we certainly hope, and we certainly hope, that you will uh, uh, make that sacrifice because we continue to uh, say that legacy is so important and it would be great if we can chip away at that mortgage so that we uh, can, can soon eliminate the mortgage. Let the people of God say amen. And so please always keep that in mind. For those of you who are giving uh, from home, the giving platforms are on the screen. And for those of you who are here, the, the platforms are on the screen. If you're giving in person, won't you hold your gifts to the very end of the service so that, uh, and the offices will be in place to receive them. Please remember that if you're giving by cash app, Put your name in the memo if your name is not recognizable. We cannot uh, credit your giving if we don't know your name. So please remember that. Let the people of God say amen. Let the people of God say praise the Lord. the 
and Omega.
together, Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. Master, Savior, Jesus. Hallelujah. Friend, deliverer, healer, Jesus. Throw your head back and call it one more time. Amen, 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 and amen. We thank God for Jesus. Won't you turn your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 9, verses 1 through 6. This is the word of the Lord. Meanwhile, Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. He went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, so that if he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, he might take them as prisoners to Jerusalem. Now as he neared Damascus on his journey, Suddenly, a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. And then the second verse, John 16 and 13, simply says this, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. I'm going to borrow my sermon topic um, from a book that Reverend Renita wrote some years ago called Listening for God. Listening for God. You may go to your seats. Sisters and brothers, without a doubt, the serious Christian for the serious Christian Hearing and obeying the word of God is essential for our journey. As an earnest believer, we should always struggle to know the voice of God and to work to decipher his voice. Decipher his voice from our own will. Decipher his voice from the voices of culture. See, life is too hard for us to live without seeking godly advice. You can say amen. amen. Life is too hard for us to live without seeking God's guidance and divine direction. We often need clarity, and it is apparent that every believer should be intentional about wanting to hear God's voice so that we can know, so that we can receive the divine help that we need to move in the right direction. I don't know about you, but I cannot make it by myself. I need to hear from God. So many of us have found ourselves asking, asking God, is this, is, is what I'm feeling led to do a God thing? Or is this a me thing? Lord, speak. Should I have the surgery or should I trust you for my healing? We need God to tell us, is this house for me or should I wait for another? 
Should I take this job or, or, or should I keep looking? Is this man the man I should marry? Is this my wife? We need to hear from God. Should I stay or should I leave? How should I handle this situation? Is this God speaking or is this me speaking? Am I being led by God or am I being led by my flesh? Lord, I need to hear your voice. Church, we must remember that authentic spiritual life is, has to be rooted in one's desire to know and do the will of God. Because the spiritual life is life that is lived in alignment with God. The spiritual life is the life that is lived following God's leading. To be spiritual is to want to hear from God and to seek to know his voice. One writer, Walter Brueggemann, says that God's people are to be a listening people. Because God is a God who speaks. The ears of our heart must always be open to the voice of God. Brueggemann says, and, and he shows us that in, in, in Hebrew, the word for listening is shama. That word does not just mean that one hears God, but it means that when one hears God, they must put what they hear into practice. Amen. James uh, 1 and 22 says it this way, do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. So that means that when God speaks, we don't just hear but we do, we move, we, we obey, we change, we become someone different. Because God is a relational God, the call to listen to God is found throughout the biblical text. Especially, listen, when, especially when arrogance and disobedience threatened to pull one of God's chosen ones off in the wrong direction. See, God does speak to those God created. And he speaks to those who follow him. When God has a plan, when God has a mission, a, a, a change that God wants to make, turn to your neighbor and say, God speaks. God speaks to us to reveal to us who God is. And if the truth be told, he often speaks to us to reveal to us who we really are. He will speak to us to check us and tell us to shut up and walk away. He will speak to us and tell us not to get bogged down in quagmires of gossip and, and character assassination. When God speaks, he will speak to us and lie and, 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 and pull us in so that we can represent him well. We know that God spoke to, to Adam and Eve and told them specifically not to eat of the fruit. They did it anyway, but God spoke to them. God speaks to those whom God creates. God spoke to Noah and Abraham, told Abraham to leave home and to follow his lead so that he can become the father of many nations. And, and Hagar, God spoke to Hagar and told her to endure what she had to endure be, uh, so she could become the mother of a nation. God spoke to Moses 
and told him that he had been chosen to be the deliverer of his people. God spoke to Joshua and told him to be strong and courageous for he had to be the one to take the people into the promised land. God speaks and, and God calls the reluctant to move in a direction they never wanted to go. God spoke to men and women like Martin Luther King and Rosa Parks and Fannie Lou Hamer and so many because God had something in mind. God instructs us often uh, 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 to be still and to wait on God. Uh, God tells us to get up and do something or he'll tell you to sit down, fall back and pray. God is the absolute power and not to listen for his voice and not to listen to his voice will surely make us underdeveloped believers. You see, there is a disobedience problem in the kingdom. And this problem grows out of the reality that they are, there are many who are here, but they are not listening for God. They are not listening to God. There is a disobedience problem in the kingdom, and it is a trap into which many believers have fallen. But can I tell you today that God has a will for our lives? And while the Bible is the blueprint for all of us to follow, there are some specific and personal words that God has for each one of God's children, amen, and we need to listen for what God has to say. See, God will speak to us about the things in our lives that need to change. <clears throat> he will tell us specifically, you need to work on your attitude. Stop spending so much money. Anybody ever heard God speak? Spend more time in the word. Do your job adequately. Get up and be on time. Or he'll tell you to get some rest. He'll, uh, God will tell you to remove yourself from those people and he'll name them that are hindering your progress. He will say, ignore those folk who are trying to provoke you and just trust me. Do something radical and break that addiction. God speaks to God's children. God speaks to those who follow God. And the good news is, my sisters and brothers, there are some folk in the kingdom, and I believe there's some folk in this sanctuary who honestly want to know what God has to say. They yearn to be able to know the will of God because they don't want to miss the uh, defining moments that come when God speaks, the moments that will determine the trajectory of their lives. Uh, is there anyone in here who desperately wants to hear, desperately wants to listen to the voice of God because you know that when God speaks, God speaking can lead to open doors and the fulfillment of purpose. God speaking can take you off uh, 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 away from what's trying to destroy you into a better place. God speaking can give you stable finances and peace of mind. We want God to speak and that is the struggle for most of us because sometimes other voices, including our own inner voice, can try to overrule the voice of God. Can I get a witness? Some of us have made some wrong choices and done some destructive things because we honestly thought we heard from God. We've not been able to distinguish God's voice from our desires. We've not been able to distinguish God's voice from our pain or our hopes or our anger or our disappointment, our embarrassment or our personal beliefs. But today we understand the necessity to 
declutter our minds and our hearts so that we can hear, truly hear the voice of God. See, many of us pray and we see God's face because we often find ourselves at odds with ourselves, at odds with people, at odds with culture. Uh, and we want to know what God is saying to us because we really do want to experience the gift of divine approval. We, uh, so often, I'm, uh, you know, I'm gonna testify, so often we think we hear but we find that we were really not able to distinguish God's voice from our political party or our professional agendas or our financial goals or our social media connections or our cultural fads. And so uh, we who love God are always praying the prayer that Samuel prayed, speak Lord, your servant hears. We want to know. Now, admittedly, there are those who say they follow Jesus, but they're not trying to consult God. They feel that parts of their lives of all are off limits to God, and they're not really interested in discovering God's desire for their lives, and they, they function accordingly. They don't consult God. They just do what they do. They do not invite God's voice into their lives. In fact, there are many who deliberately shut God out. They will let God speak to them about some things, but they will not even entertain God's will in other areas of their lives. And if they pray and seek God's faith, voice, they hear what they want to hear. Lord, help us. They hear God saying what God is not saying, but their personal will or their opinions are so strong that they declare that they are hearing from God. But I want everybody to stop and just say, Lord, we want to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, God, what will we do? Church, I have found out that far too often we find those who say they want to hear from God definitively. They, 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 they say it, we say it, but often we go off in that wrong direction. And, 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 and uh, I have found out that throughout the ages, many, many have made some terrible mistakes because they thought they heard from God but they heard wrong. Such is the case of a man named Saul. Saul of Tarsus was a devout Jew who was highly educated and well respected in the religious community. When Christianity began to spread, Saul being a good God-fearing Jew began to persecute those who followed Jesus. Now, I'm sure you all that Saul practiced his religious uh, rituals and spent time in prayer. And I believe that being uh, the religious man that he was, he thought he heard from God as he went about oppressing Christian believers. He thought he was doing the right thing. When we first meet him in the biblical text, He's standing on the sidelines at the stoning of Stephen, holding the coats of those who were throwing stones. Now, from our perspective, maybe holding coats is not such a big deal. But his holding of the coats meant that he was complicit in the persecution of one of Jesus' followers. From our perspective, and from the culture's perspective, Saul, well, no, from the culture's perspective, Saul was the epitome of religious correctness. But what we now know is that he was incorrect, he was confused, and he had gotten caught up in human treachery. For he was a persecutor of God's people. But in his mind, 
He thought he was doing his religious duty. He thought that he should be about the business of persecuting Jesus' followers. All but one day, while he was traveling on the road to Damascus to hunt down, hunt down some of his religious opposition, on that day a bright light from heaven shined on him, knocked him off his horse, and a voice from heaven, a voice, somebody say a voice, a voice from heaven resounded, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He who thought he had heard from God before was now having a rude awakening because God was speaking to him this day loud and clear and God was speaking so that he could get it right and stop doing what he had been doing and get on the road to his purpose. And so Saul said, Lord, who art thou? And the voice said, I am Jesus, the one you have been persecuting. Imagine that. Jesus. The Jesus whose power and authenticity Saul had previously denounced was speaking to him. I suspect that for a split second, Saul must have thought he was about to die. After all, he had conspired and he had carried out the death of Jesus' followers. So why wouldn't Jesus end his life right there on the Damascus Road? But church, I found out that before God eliminates us, God will speak to us. Before God gives up on us, God will speak to us. Amen. Uh, 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 Saul had been a hateful and destructive man. Why wouldn't Jesus cause the animal that he had been riding to trample him to death? But Jesus did not call, uh, kill Saul because Jesus, who was the voice of God, had another plan for his life. He told him to get up and go into the city and await further instructions. It's a good thing when God speaks. And thank God, he not only did not get what he deserved, but he now was on a, uh, 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 a road to full obedience. Oh, I believe that there's some folk in the sanctuary, there's some folk visiting us today that are grateful that Saul's testimony is our testimony. The Lord did not give us what we deserved. We messed up. We thought we were doing the right thing. We were just as off as we could be, but God still came to see about us. Is there anybody who will rejoice with me? Because you have found out firsthand that God will give us another chance to get it right. God will speak to us. God will admonish us. God will teach us. God will vict us. Do I have any witnesses that though you have not done all, everything right, though you have done a whole lot of wrong, God still spoke to you and opened new ways of being and took you places that you could have never imagined for yourself. Can we just stop and thank God? We were destructive, we were disobedient, we were doing our own thing, but Jesus did not cut us off from our blessings or, or put us down for our messes, but he pulled us out and he loved us. He spoke words of love to us and he gave us another chance. Not just another chance. He'll give you chance after chance after chance so you can become your best self. He continually calls his people to the place of personal change. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, I hear you speaking, and he beckons us to take advantage of the opportunities that he gives us to leave the destructive and the detrimental. I'm shouting today because God is speaking. God is still leading. God is still forgiving. God is still watching over us. Uh, 
God is still trying to let us know the way we have to go. I am still here because the Lord continues to speak and the Lord continues to forgive and the Lord continues to instruct and re-instruct and reiterate so that I can live for him. The Lord is always summoning his people. Can I get a witness? Uh, sometimes we try to ignore it, uh, but he speaks to the angry. He speaks to the addicted. Uh, he will speak to the abusive. Uh, he will speak to the ashamed. Uh, and he will tell you to leave your places of defeat uh, and come with him to better places. Uh, oh, you ought to give God praise. Uh, he always seeks us out. Uh, he will seek out the battered. He will seek out the bitter. He will seek out the broken. He will seek out the burned up. And he will offer us new possibilities to live beyond our past. Ah, church, Jesus is here today speaking to the drifting, speaking to the disappointed, speaking to the dismissed, speaking to the discouraged, telling you to seize this moment. You can start all over again. For you, lo, I am with you even unto the end of the world. The Lord had to knock Saul off his horse, had to blind him to make him ready to recognize his divine voice. And some of us have been knocked off of our proverbial horses. Hallelujah. And we have had to rebuke spiritual deafness so that we could really hear the voice of God. And we cannot forget that before Saul, I like this, had been fully aligned, could be fully aligned with God. If you read in Acts, God tells him to get up and go to Ananias' home. And while he was there, he was what? He was filled with the Holy Spirit. That reminds us, my sisters and brothers, that the Holy Spirit is our teacher, is God's voice. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. The Holy Spirit is our leader. The Holy Spirit is God's mouthpiece. The Holy Spirit will help us to discern the voice of God. The Holy Spirit will speak to us by putting a check in our spirit. The Holy Spirit will tell us, don't go this way, go that way. Ah, the Holy Spirit will tell you this is a trap. They're trying to set you up. The Holy Spirit, oh, thank you, Jesus. Aren't you glad he speaks to us? Aren't you glad that he covers us? The Holy Spirit will show you who's lying to you, who's lying on you, who's trying. Oh, I thank God every day for the Holy Ghost. And I believe that the Lord is speaking and has been speaking to God's children today. Someone in this sanctuary, someone viewing. And I believe you know that God has told you to move away from the sick and the twisted and the illegal and the painful things in your lives and move toward the healthy, move toward the honest, and move toward the holy. Come on here. God is speaking, and I'm wondering if there are some folk today who will agree that I can no longer shut out God's voice. I may be, Lord have mercy, I may be having a good time, but I know that God is saying something different. Is there anyone in the sanctuary, is there anyone viewing this morning who will take Jesus up on his undeserved offer and be created anew. Old things have passed away and behold, I will do a new thing in you, saith the Lord. Hunt somebody and say, listen for God. Listen to God. Saul did what God told him to do and almost instantly he became committed to doing mighty works in the name of Jesus. For several days after Saul met Jesus, 
The Bible says that he spent time uh, with the disciples at Damascus. This new Saul stayed in the company of, his, of, of the disciples so that he might grow and become more knowledgeable about God. He entered into the process of delving into spiritual things so that he might hear God's voice. So you, it's hard to hear God's voice, amen, if you don't get to know God through the word of God. Say amen, somebody. And he had to hear God before he could carry out the apostolic ministry to which he had been called. And then after he studied and after he had his ears attuned to the mouth of God, the Bible says that he began to preach in the synagogues that Jesus was the son of God. My soul is happy. My sisters and brothers, now more than ever, with all that is going on around us, we need uh, uh, to have a listening heart. Say amen, everybody. Our need to live well and to live for God compels us to live with our ear open to the truths of God. Now, I have a few hints that we all need to consider. What we hear, if you really want to know if you're hearing God, uh, what we hear will always line up with Scripture. Can I say that again? What we hear, what we say God is saying to us, if it does not line up with scripture, then you're hearing flesh. Amen. Amen. Be clear, God will never tell us to do anything that contradicts God's word. That requires that we know the word, that we understand the word, and let God's word be the primary language that we speak because God's word is the primary language of the Holy Spirit. And as we study the word, we have to be clear that transformation will come when God speaks to us through God's word. Now, many will say God told them, amen, that they should uh, 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 do this to you. God told them that they should strike out. God told them to cuss you out. God does not contradict dick God's word. Say amen, somebody. God will not tell you if you're hungry to go steal. Uh, 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 you, you, uh, God does not invite anyone to sin. <clears throat> and so, another point. When God speaks... His instructions will always be consistent with his character. See, God is not spiteful. God is not nasty. God is not revengeful. Say amen. Knowing God's word and knowing God because we know God's word, helps. Uh, uh, we will discover God's character. Say amen. And sometimes we ask ourselves, what would Jesus do? What would Jesus do in this situation? That is a relevant question that helps us to make decisions for our own lives. Galatians 5, 22 and 23 tells us that the fruit of the Spirit, listen to me, is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is reflective of who God is and who we should be. And I know this week some of us have been mad as we could be 
and we wanted to do something, Lord have mercy, that we know we should not have done. I, God has been having to speak to me all week long, but we must remember, Lord have mercy, that we must exemplify the fruit of the Spirit if we are going to be a true follower of Christ. Ah, you can be mad, but you work on your own anger and let God do what God does. We've got to know God. We've got to love God. We've got to think about God, and we've got to imitate God. Come on, put your hands together. And lastly, often when God speaks to us, what God is saying will be confirmed through messages, amen, messages that we hear at church, maybe a song, maybe a, a televangelist, maybe in your quiet time, God will give you confirmation. Confirmation can come through a sermon or through a conversation with a friend. Sometimes God will say it over and over and over again until we get it. And that's why we have to spend time alone with God. Listen, I'm finished. But boy, uh, sisters and brothers, uh, as we move into the future, the future that God has for us, let us engage in the process of listening. Uh, throw your hand up and say it again. Uh, uh, speak, Lord, speak. The Lord does not let anyone or anything tell The Lord wants us not to allow anyone or anything to drown out God's voice. God is speaking to the church. God is speaking to God's people. God is speaking to those who want to hear. And sometimes he'll speak what you don't want to hear. And let me say this. Every now and then, you may experience a season of silence. Uh, some of you have been waiting for God to speak for a long time in a certain situation. Uh, 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 you want to hear God direct you. You want to know what God wants you to do. Uh, but I have found out that sometimes God doesn't speak up when we need God to speak up. Some of us will say he's not speaking yet. He's not speaking yet. I'm still struggling with some stuff in this season. I keep asking God what to do, but God has not told me what to do. But can I tell you this? Even though God is not speaking, there is something about being in his presence. Just stay in his presence. Just experience his power. Just experience his love. And know that God is concerned for your life. Uh, uh, throw your hands up and say, I know he is my friend. Amen. Ah, Lord, have mercy. While you are waiting, can we just enjoy the presence of God? While you are still trying to seek his face, don't pout. But just get in his presence uh, and know that in his presence uh, there is fullness of joy. Church, I am expecting God to do great things. Uh, and so even though God has been silent uh, around some things in my life, uh, my faith tells me that when God speaks, God will reveal God's self as never before. Hallelujah. Come on, church, let's put our hands together. My time is up. Hallelujah, but let me remind you of this one thing. When God speaks, uh, we have to move. When God speaks, uh, we have to stand up. When God speaks, uh, we have to commit to obedience. Uh, when God speaks, come on, get up on your feet. Uh, we have to go the distance. Uh, when God speaks, uh, you'll have to carry the load. Uh, when God speaks, uh, you can lead with grace. Uh, when God speaks, uh, you can celebrate the glory of God. Uh, when God speaks, uh, you will walk into your season. Uh, tell somebody I'm ready. When God speaks, uh, you can pray without complaining. When God speaks, uh, you can get a revelation uh, that will fortify you in your weak places. Uh, when God speaks, uh, you will be stronger and you will know that if you just keep your hand uh, in God's hand uh, and keep your ear 
to the voice of God. God will do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you could ask. Hear the word of the Lord. Listen for God. Listen for his voice. Come on, shake somebody's hand and say, I'm listening. I'm listening. I want to go all the way with the Lord Jesus Christ. My faith tells me that God, hallelujah, has something to say that will make all the difference in my life. Say yes, Lord. When the Lord speaks, say yes, Lord. When the Lord calls, just do what he tells you to do. When the Lord checks you, hallelujah, just turn around and start all over again. Because believe me, this one thing, his plans are to prosper us. His plans are not to harm us. Men may harm us. Enemies may harm us. The political system may harm us. The legal system may try to harm us. But he declares that, that my plans are not to harm you. My plans are to give you hope and a future. And guess what? He also said in the Old Testament, when you hear my voice, uh, when you follow my lead, no weapon formed against you will prosper. Say yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord. God will make a way somehow. God will lead you through the fire, but you will not be burned. God will take you over the mountains. In fact, God will give you the authority to speak to your mountains and have them crumble before your very eyes. Listen for God. Listen for God. Listen for God. Not culture, listen for God. Hallelujah. Listen for God. And the Lord says, if I be with you, it's more than the world against you. If you obey, you'll be blessed in the city. You'll be blessed in the field. You'll be blessed in the mall. You'll be blessed on your job. You'll be blessed at home. You'll be blessed when you come and when you go. The Lord says, if you listen, if you hear my voice, you will experience the fullness of Jesus Christ and a peace that the world cannot take away. Get your hands up. Speak to my heart, Lord. Some of you are in those places that you need to hear from God. Speak to my heart. Let that be your prayer. I don't want to go do the wrong thing.
on the door of the church is open. Speak to my heart, Lord. Is there one today who will admit, who will say, yes, the Lord is speaking to me, telling me that I need to do something different. The Lord may be telling you to come out of where you are and enter into a new space, a sacred space. So is there one here today who will come and give one of these ministers your hand? But more importantly, give the Lord your heart. God bless you, my sister. I see you coming. I see you coming. The Lord has you. The Lord has me on his heart. So won't you just come and know that his, his plan is never to harm you, but his plan is to love you and to give you a better future. Is there one who will come? Is there one who will come? Is there another? Is there another? who have come I wonder you would you would you prepare your hearts and minds now to receive the broken body of our Lord Jesus Christ and shed blood as we celebrate on this first Sunday in October our communion Jesus said in the word as often as you do this you show forth your belief that I am the Messiah the son of the true and living God and I know that the hour is late, but let's just take a minute and pray together the general confession. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against your divine majesty, provoking most justly your wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us, have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please you in the newness of life to the honor and glory of your name 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Bible says that as Jesus gave uh, the bread and the wine to his disciples, he broke it, he blessed it, and he said, take eat in, remem in remembrance of me. May God bless and may God sanctify. You may be seated. Oh, I know it was the blood. broken body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. His body was broken for you, for me, and for all of humankind. Let us eat today with joy and thanksgiving. I know it was the blood. He was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquity. By his stripes we are healed, and by his blood we are covered.
And now, Lord God, dismiss us from this place, but never from your presence. As we sing together, praise God from whom all blessings flow. dismissed from this place but never from his presence thank you for worshiping with us today we invite you to stay connected with us on our website at allencathedral.org and across our social platforms including our youtube channel facebook page instagram and twitter accounts give tithes and offerings on our website and mobile app which can be downloaded from the itunes store and google play Visit our website and listen to our daily prayers, watch Bible studies, see featured videos, and more on our mobile app and the church website. Subscribe to receive our weekly digital event calendar and text alerts by going to the church website at allencathedral.org and follow the prompts to subscribe. You are invited to join us on our live prayer line weeknights at 8 p.m. to 8.20 p.m. and Saturdays at 9 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. where you will hear from Pastor Elaine Flake and friends. The dial-in details are available on our website. Again, we are so grateful for the opportunity to worship with you today. Our church doors are open. We would love to worship with you in person Sundays at 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. There is a seat for you, so join us. We continue to keep your safety and health in mind. So stay connected throughout the week, and we look forward to worshiping with you again next week. To God be the glory.